to go with the brass or lead, I had to hit really hard and I was worried about that. So I went in and tapped it and when you tap with the hard metal against the hard metal you get more of a ting and I felt that was breaking the rust better than hitting it harder with a lead or brass hammer. So that being said, let's talk about why do you grind in a six jaw chuck? Well the reason is you need to get all the jaws in alignment. Instead of having three, which is a three jaw chuck, all three jaws are going to approach and give equal pressure all the way around. And a four jaw chuck, you're gonna move those in and out to get equal pressure all the way around. But on a six jaw chuck, you have a chance of variances and lining up. Now, other people also ask, well, since I've got an adjustable back on this and I can actually change the concentricity of this chuck and get the part lined up, why don't I do that? Well, there's a really a good reason for that. This chuck is out about, well, let's check it. So this chuck is out about 15 thousandths, which is way, way out. Definitely needs to be reground, but I could, like I said, change the back and make it work that way. But the reason I can't do that is, because I tried it, is it shifts so much of it, or so much of the chuck, that the lathe is no longer in balance because of that. So what I've kind of really discovered is, you can move it around about five thousandths. Past that, you're gonna be getting out of balance. And if you have to go past five thousandths, well, you probably need to do what we're gonna do in this video. So let's talk about grinding in this chuck. Now, first of all, you need to realize that chucks have a lot of, what do I wanna say, air in it. There's a lot of slop in the scroll and the way the jaw is attached to it. And they have to because if you think about that scroll that's in here that allows these jaws to move in and out, the radius has changed on each scroll or each thread. The engineering behind setting these up is really pretty complicated, so there's never really good pressure on any one of these teeth, and they have to put slop in there so they will actually work together. So what does that mean? That means we have to preload these jaws so we can grind them in and get them accurate. So with a set of jaws in there, when they come pressing together, no matter where my part is, these jaws are going to press out a little bit. And that's when we grind them in, is we want to get them preset like that. So we're going to do some tricks here. Now, some people think that you can just put a pipe in here or a piece of metal when this comes down and keep that in alignment. Well, it doesn't work that way because most of your pressure is going to be out here. And I don't know about you guys, but when I put pieces in my jaws, sometimes they don't go all the way back. So we want to make sure that we can get this pressed in and swung out. So what we wanna do is be able to put a ring in here and grind this out. Well, we can't do that very easily. So I'm gonna show you my technique for doing this. I am not saying it is the right way to do it. I'm just saying it's my way to do it. And I'm gonna add a new feature to the jaws. I'm gonna actually bring these in, clamp them down on a piece of solid stock, and then I'm going to cut out right here, and I'm gonna cut out and put a recess in there so I can put a part in there that allows me to grind through it. I know this is kind of crazy that I'm adding a feature to this, but it's a feature that you're gonna find really beneficial. How many of you guys get a washer and the hole in the washer, it's the wrong side? So you're gonna really like this feature just for that. So we got the ring made, now we're going to mount up the grinder. So here's something really cool. This is something I made, had a lot of fun making, it's probably one of the first real projects I've made in the shop since I've moved here. Let's mount the grinder in. This is a Metabo. You could use any grinder that you have available to you. Here's another great little device. Something I just kind of whipped up. I had a bunch of extra spare parts and this is for dressing the stone. 
Dressing the stone only takes a few seconds and it's something you want to be able to do quick and easy. The dressing of the stone is really set up to do a couple things for you. One is it's going to clean out all the garbage that's in here and it's going to give you nice sharp edges on here on the wheel. Also it balances it and trues it up for you. But before we do all this stuff, before we start to grind, there's something that you have to do and you need to align and level your lathe. Now there is two words there, align and level, and I'd like to do a whole video on that. If you guys want to see me do how to align a lathe, I can do that. Just put some notes in the comment and if I get enough interested people, I'll do that. So why you have to align this is, well we have our chuck. If the bed is twisted in any way and we grind this out, we're not going to get an accurate grind. Therefore, we're kind of defeating the purpose of what we're trying to do with this video. Let's bring you in a little bit closer and let's start to do some grinding. And we're going to try to set up a really light, light grind. I'm just going to work right off the edge at the beginning. We're going to slow this way, way down. Okay, we're at 45 RPMs. So I think we've had a successful grind. I just realized I forgot to do something. <laughs> Let me turn the machine off. So I forgot to do something. I should have put down a towel here um, to help collect the, the grinding dust and stuff. So before I move the lathe around, let's clean this up a bit. And now I think we have a very successful grind on the inside here. I think that just looks fantastic. We'll test it a little bit later. Now we're going to talk about doing the outside grind. And now since we've got this all set up, now the outside grind, again, we have to look at the jaws. So when we put pressure on these jaws, remember they're going to kink out. Well now we're going to put pressure on the outside so they're actually going to kink in. So we've got to do the same thing here. We developed a ring here to get that grip. Now we're going to do a ring on the opposite and then we're going to grind these outside surfaces, find a larger ring, and then do those surfaces. So let's keep going. <laughs> 